Howdy once again everyone, to celebrate their 50th anniversary last year, Samyang released this, their first ever autofocus zoom lens, the Samyang AF 24-70mm f2.8 fe, nice. Samyang actually used to make zoom lenses back in the 1980s, you can see some of them here in some footage I shot in their factory when I had the pleasure of visiting them back in 2014. Gah, I really miss my time living in South Korea, I want to get back there as soon as possible for some galbi and some budejige. Ah, but a lot has moved on since the 1980s and this is their first autofocus zoom lens. It's a conventional choice for a zoom lens in many ways, a fast standard zoom for full frame cameras is a staple of many a photographer's kit bag and video makers too but it's still a very challenging lens to design, one of the toughest actually. That useful zoom range combined with bright aperture of f2.8 makes this lens potentially extremely useful but difficult for designers to make fully sharp. In order to be competitive, Samyang offer this lens at a reasonable price of $1000 or £830 here in the UK and they claim that it has special features for video makers, we'll see about that in a minute. Let's start by looking at the lens's build quality, no one can escape the immediate fact that this lens is big and its weight of over a kilogram or two and a half pounds means that it'll be much more at home on a larger camera body. However, the lens is rather impressive in how it handles, it's a real bulldozer. It's made of metal throughout, with a weather sealing gasket in the rear. The zoom ring is large, rubberized and it turns heavily but evenly with almost no stickiness to it, so that could be particularly useful to video makers. Speaking about zoom rings and video makers, Samyang claimed that this lens is par focal. Is that true? Well, actually only partially. The lens is not optically parfocal, I'm afraid. Instead, it electronically readjusts focus as you zoom in and out, which is kind of cheating really, and a number of other lenses on the market do that too. Here you can see me slowly zooming in and out. The lens mostly manages to keep up with my zooming movements, staying in focus, well, most of the time anyway. As you can tell, I wasn't totally impressed with Samyang's par vocal claims here, although technically it does work most of the time. Anyway, above the zoom ring comes the focus ring, which turns smoothly and works with the lens's focus motor really nice and responsively. Some good news here is that across most of the zoom range, the lens exhibits very little focus breathing, as you can see. However, zoom out to the widest angles and some breathing can be seen. When it comes to autofocus performance, in single shot mode, the lens focuses smoothly, silently, accurately and quite quickly. If you shoot in autofocus continuous mode, then, at least with my Sony a7R 3 the lens focuses almost instantaneously and keeps up with your movements very well, and that is important for video work, so top marks here. The lens's filter size is a large 82mm wide and it comes with quite a generously sized plastic lens hood. Overall, there are many facets to this lens's build quality, its dimensions make this the Texas of camera lenses, it is big and that means it handles nicely, but you'll need strong arms to shoot with it all day. Its focusing system is excellent and well suited to video work, but its claim to be par focal is a bit misleading, when the truth is that it is readjusting its focus in firmware. Alright, well, let's take a look at its image quality now. I'm testing it today on a Sony a7R 3 with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. In the camera corrections are turned on. At the widest angle of 24mm, we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast in the middle of the image straight from f2.8. Corner image quality is softer with some visible chromatic aberration despite the in-camera corrections being turned on, but still a decent level of detail is being captured there. f4 looks about the same but f5.6 looks just a tiny bit sharper. The lens stays this sharp down to f11, if you stop down to f16 then a little further softness creeps in due to the effects of diffraction. Let's zoom in a bit now to 45mm, at f2.8 again, image quality in the middle is essentially perfect, 
And again, the cornice looks softer, just a little worse than at 24mm, but still not terrible. Stop down to f4, f5.6 and f8 to see gradual improvements that lead to excellent image quality in the corners to match the middle. Ok, let's zoom all the way into 70mm. At f2.8 we still see very sharp image quality in the middle, although we also see a little ghosting on contrasting edges. Corner image quality looks fairly sharp though, but a little colour fringing makes a return. Stop down to f4 for a touch more sharpness in the corners and excellent contrast and sharpness back in the middle. At f5.6 that image quality remains fantastic in the middle and sharpness in the corners has become excellent too. The lens stays this sharp down to f11. Overall, the image quality coming out of this Samyang lens is fairly pleasing if you consider that full frame, fast standard zoom lenses really are one of the most difficult for manufacturers to design and also that it's on the lower end of the price spectrum. All things considered, the sharpness is good, although you should stop down the lens's aperture to make the corner image quality really come to life. Ok, well let's turn off in-camera corrections and see about distortion and vignetting. At 24mm we see pretty strong barrel distortion as expected and at f2.8 the corners look pretty dark too. You need to stop down to f5.6 or f8 to see those corners brighten up. Zoom in to 35mm and the distortion straightens out. At 70mm we see moderate pincushion distortion and again vignetting in the corners at f2.8. Stop down to f4 to see that reduced and at f5.6 the vignetting goes away. Now let's take a look at close up image quality. If you zoom in to 70mm then your minimum focus distance is a mere 35cm. However, image quality at f2.8 there is very poor, soft with huge colour fringing. Stop down to f4, f5.6 and f8 for gradual improvements that do lead to good image quality close up, but it's only at a very dark f11 that we see excellent sharpness and low colour fringing. If you want to shoot close up then your best bet here is to zoom out to 24mm. At f2.8 sharpness and contrast are fantastically good and stop down to f4 for perfection. So if you're shooting close up stop down to at least f8 or zoom out a bit. Now let's see how the lens works against bright lights. It's good news here, at wider angles flaring remains low and contrast generally remains nice and high. If you zoom in then we still see a very nice performance although at certain angles a little flash of flaring pops up. If you're shooting in critical situations then using the lens hood is a good idea. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. Out of focus areas look pretty nice and smooth here although specular highlights in the background have a little blue coloured outlining to them which suggests to me some strong longitudinal chromatic aberration which neatly leads us on to longitudinal chromatic aberration. The lens gets a big black mark in this area at f2.8 as you can clearly see. At f4 and f5.6 it's still pretty bad, it's only really at f8 that that colour fringing begins to really clear up. Overall then, well the Samyang AF 24-70mm f2.8 FE left me with no shortage of interesting strengths and weaknesses to wrestle with and try and understand. For example, it's misleading for Samyang to advertise it as being par focal when actually it's achieving this by electronically refocusing like many other zoom lenses do. Also, it's an unusually large and heavy lens and optically it has some real problems with colour fringing, both lateral and longitudinal. However, it's also a lens with plenty of potential. Although it is a very large lens, its build quality does lend itself very well to video work and its autofocus is quick and smooth and its focus breathing is lower than average, all of which are also useful for filmmaking. Its contrast is good, its images look quite lovely and it's also a pretty sharp lens and while its image corners might be a bit softer at f2.8, they do sharpen up nicely on stopping down the aperture. And like any 24-70mm f2.8 lens, it really is enormously useful for a huge number of applications. This is a good lens for video work if you are happy with its only semi parfocal nature and stills photographers will find it pretty good value for money too.
Considering its competitive price, if you can live with its idiosyncrasies, then it comes just about recommended. Gah, testing out that lens was a bit of a tricky experience for me to be honest, but at the end of the day, it does get you some lovely pictures. Speaking of lovely, I really appreciate all my Patreon supporters. I don't say this enough, but thank you for your support in keeping this YouTube channel going. If you haven't already, check out my Patreon page in the description below to find out more about how you can be part of helping this channel to grow while getting all kinds of bonus content too. Ciao for now.